Anderson, and I'm going to talk to you today about variable speed, primarily around a residential uh, single phase type of equipment. But just to let you know, we are also working on developing um, three phase and uh, larger commercial type equipment. So um, first couple of charts, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we see about trends, primarily about the market place and where we think variable speed makes the most sense. And then I wanted to move a little bit into um, our design and some of the reliability and the patent type of uh, uh, products that we've put into it, as well as on the drive. So we can kind of give you a little bit of feedback on it. And uh, over there we have a stand so you can actually see the cutaway. And there's brochure information as well. And I will stay afterwards if you have any questions on our variable speed technology. So this is a little bit about what the market looks like. And here I'm talking about the, um, the unitary market. And so despite the economy and what we all feel, we've seen a large growth in the high SEER equipment being sold through, whether it's single stage, two stage, or variable speed. And so you can see even with the government incentives, if you take those out, we've got about 10% of the equipment sold is in the higher SEER. Um, about a third of that is heat pump. And even though we've seen natural gas prices coming down, we have seen a steady holding of heat pump somewhere around 32, 34%. So big growth over the last 10 years and we're holding. Um, here you can kind of see majority of the heat pumps are sold in the southeast, about 70% uh, of them, with the rest of the market being primarily air conditioning. Some of the new variable speed technology, primarily uh, the, over, the ones that are capable of over speed, actually have great sear um, characteristics, but in addition to that, they also have the ability to make them pretty hot heat pumps, which we think can expand the heat pump market outwards. When you look a little bit at what the market looks like by sear, you can see the majority of the heat pumps, or I should say once you hit 15, 16 sear, it's about half and half. Half sear based products and half really around heating. So for that reason, when we designed our variable speed scroll, we really focused on ensuring that we had a good heating product along with sear as well. We spent a lot of time kind of working with contractors trying to understand what it is that they wanted and where some of the shortfalls were in the system today. And clearly over in um, cooling, we know that comfort is a big issue with the repetitive cycling, the inability to really be able to control humidity, uh, the ability to be able, they really wanted the ability to be able to run at low speed so we could provide comfort conditions. And clearly variable speed offers that to you to be able to run at lower speeds. But in addition to that, one of the other big concerns that we saw from the contractors is people don't feel like heat pumps generate hot air. And uh, you probably all know when you put your hand over the register, it doesn't feel like it's warming your house when it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. So one of the new things that heat pumps be able to operate, or at least in this one, that even when it's 10 degrees outside, the supply air is still 100 degrees on some of these heat pumps. And even at zero degree ambient, we can provide a full capacity heat pump, whether it's three ton or five ton, in heating as well as in cooling. So some of the things around the variable speed scroll that we've designed and manufactured, we've got about 25 patents in the scroll. We built it off our fifth generation product of scroll, so we used a lot of the fixed speed knowledge to put into the variable speed. And we're able to, obviously with variable speed, year round comfort. We've uh, got outstanding reliability that we have learned in our variable our products, our fixed speed products, and brought them through over here. Um, we have some really nice envelopes. We're able to operate down to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but again, full capacity on heat pumps down to zero. So that gives us some minimal cycling. And for that reason, we're able to hold comfort. But minimum cycling also gives you increased reliability because we're not turning it on and off as much. So a lot of benefits from being able to do that. In addition to that, we also have um, some very protective software that we have um, IP built around. If you were here earlier, you heard about CoreSense. Well, we have a lot of software that predicts when the compressor is in a um, near fault condition or a bad part of the envelope it doesn't want to be in. And then we're able to put it back in a place so that we don't have faults or failures in the field. And so in this current generation, there's about 34 diagnostic codes. Some of them are housed in the drive as well to be able to protect the compressor. So when we launch our future generations, we're going to be adding more predictive codes to those to be able to protect. In addition, you can see on our first generation, um, used in systems where we have pretty good SEER, 20 plus SEER, 13 HSPF. We have about a 67% reduction in capacity for cooling and about a 60% over speed in capacity for heating. So a big range whether you want cooling or heating. 
And this is just our first generation. So I'll talk to you a little bit about our second generation on our compressors and drives, and we're going to be able to increase that efficiency going forward as well. So this is a little bit, there's the 40% energy savings that we get, but I think this is the one that I think is really kind of fascinating. It illustrates it pretty well. This line, the uh, um, line going up here, that's the capacity of a fixed speed heat pump. And as the ambient gets lower, the capacity begins to really drop off. And so if the yellow line is a three ton capacity, you can see that you get pretty short and then you, you feel cold. You're not getting nearly the warm air or capacity out of it. Well, with the variable speed system, what it does is as it gets, the ambient gets lower, we increase the RPMs on the compressor. So we can go from nominal, which is at 4,500, to an overspeed of about 7,000. And what that does is provide that constant warm air supply so you feel comfortable even when it gets cold. So let's get the product info. I'm going to show you a little bit about what we've done in the compressor to be able to do that. So this is um, our Gen 1 compressor. It's the one that's in production today. We have it in 3 and 5 horsepower. And um, you know, it, single speed and um, I mean single phase. And the compressor also works for three phase if we have a drive to be able to do it. But what you can see down here is um, because we vary the speed in the compressor, We've gone in and redesigned the oil pickup, so we have a centrifugal oil pump there to make sure that we get adequate lubrication on the drive bearings and up in the scrolls. So um, that works real well. On our next generation, we're gonna lower, the minimum RPM on this one's 1500. The next generation, the RPM will drop down to 900. That's how we're gonna get even better sear performance than we do today, a lot more comfort. And in that one, we're designing a, a new positive displacement oil pump to be able to ensure that we can get good oil circuit at those low speeds. Here what we have is we've put in, and you can see it over here in the cutaway, we're using a BPM motor, it's segmented, and in this particular case it's got some pretty high efficiency magnets in it as well. And uh, for that reason, the motor's shorter, and we're able to fit a three ton, and a, well a five ton into a three ton can, so you end up with a much smaller compressor to be able to provide the capacity that you need, and we also have a much higher efficiency motor. Uh, we also have, um, I think on this one, we have motor and temperature sensors embedded into it. So on the motor, we can be able to track the RPMs and make sure that we're getting what we ask for. We can also use that to be able to tell if we have torque problems or we're meeting some kind of resistance. It kickbacks to those protective codes and then we can shut down or adjust the performance of the compressor for the condition that we're at. We also have a temperature or thermistor in here so that we can control the temperature. If it gets too hot, we can then slow the compressor down, cool the discharge down a little bit, uh, so that we continue to have operation in a safe way. We've also um, redesigned the scrolls to be more efficient. Uh, let's see. All right, we've optimized the scroll design to be more efficient with the change in the RPM that we see here. We're going to switch back. Yeah. So that's a little bit about what's in the current compressor, and I also try to give you a highlight of what we see coming out in the next compressor as well. Um, so this is a little bit about, there's our Gen 1 compressor, that's just what I talked to you about, 3-ton, 5-ton, single phase, heating optimized at low ambient. Those compressors are made in our Lebanon, Missouri manufacturer, where we make um, most of our other compressors as well. So it's a big facility, they know what they're doing, they're well equipped. Um, Gen 2 motor drive, it's over there in display, it's right here. That's our second generation, we'll work on piloting right, right now, it'll be out later in the spring. And in this one, we have 5-ton and 3-ton samples. The kilowatts, we've reduced the kilowatts down to 6.6 .6 on the kilowatt for the five ton. We've held 4.1 on the three ton. Um, pretty high efficiency drive. We've turned it into a modular package so that it can get into your unit in a smaller configuration because some of these drives tend to be really large and the units are small. And we've managed that by putting it on a tray and breaking out the choke and filter. So we think the modular approach will really help pack it into the units. Um, this particular drive is already UL recognized. If you're interested in looking at drives, you really need to pay attention to that because a lot of the drives that are coming in from other places don't have the UL recognition and you have to add additional time and cost to be able to get it. But in this particular case, it's UL recognized. We're also looking at non-UL recognized drives if uh, folks have an interest in that as well. Just a simple graphic that talks about cycling and comfort. You can see a traditional system, you guys are all familiar with how it cycles on, off, on, off, and that provides uncomfortable periods of time. If you're in the south, it's humidity control. If you're up in the north, it could be just inefficient of being cold and then hot and then cold and hot before you reach back set. 
Well, in any type of a modulated system, you tend to narrow that band, particularly in a variable speed. If you can make the range that we've got for three to one and then over speed on heating, you have a very nice control, so you are comfortable. You're using less energy, and because you're not starting, stopping the equipment as much, it actually has a longer life. It's much more reliable. So uh, th this product, you know, we fully expect it to have a, a 15 plus year life as our other compressors do as well. So um, this is a little bit about what it looks like. I walked through those with you on that other graphic. And uh, this is what the Gen 2 drive looks like as well. And it's over there. And you can see these are some of the parts. We have included an LED display in there. And that's where it displays some of the fault codes around the protective software that I mentioned that we have in there. So this is where you would see the code displayed that you can begin your troubleshooting if you're a contractor or even if you have it in test at your OEM facility. So um, I think that's all we have. Oh, one other thing, this is really cool. And you don't have to have variable speed to be able to use this. Um, we have an eSaver app. We actually have a great toolbox of apps for contractors out on our website. They're free, download them. We've got check charge, we've got troubleshooting apps. This one here we call an eSaver app. And um, if you are with a customer and you want to show him what his current system is capable of, you load in some basic data about the current system that the homeowner may have. And then the industry minimum would be calculated on a 13 sear. And so if he were to move from his 10 sear to his 13 sear, it would show you what he would save. And then if you are promoting a certain sear, a certain system for him, let's say you're looking at a 15 sear or a 16 sear type system, you would load that in here. And then it would show you also a variable speed system. So the homeowner, depending on where he lives, because you have to need to type in where he lives so you can get the energy cost, you can be able to see the range of savings that he would have for the different kind of equipment. So that's another great way to be able to see and be able to talk to a homeowner about what this brings to him as far as savings. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming out today. Have a good show.